China, the second largest economy in the world, is on the verge of an epic economic and military collapse that has never been seen before in the recent history of the modern world. Now you all might be thinking that I'm talking total nonsense. How is this collapse possible? China at the moment is following expansionist policies, threatening to invade Taiwan and expanding its military and fortifying islands in the South China Sea to challenge the United States. How can China be facing financial and economic crisis? Well, let me explain it to you in detail. It is common practice in China to secure the future of their generations financially, economically, and socially by ensuring smooth transfer of wealth from parents to kids. But surprisingly, it might be the reason of Chinese economic collapse and destruction in generational wealth in China for the next decade. Times have changed. This generation wealth transfer among families will lead China to a deep recession that will take at least 50 years to turn things around. And in that time, regional superpowers like America, Japan, Australia, and India will make sure that China never comes on top again to challenge them. Last year, Indian military lost precious lives after a sudden attack from the Chinese military. And now, tensions are high between Australia, Japan, and China due to aggressive posturing by China. The Chinese government is taking measures to prevent this inevitable collapse and remain on top. Until 1979, the tariff rate was 56% on imported and exported goods from China. But to revolutionize the country and bring it par with Western economies, Chinese government started the free market reforms. China being the world's fastest growing economy, with real annual GDP growth averaging around 9.5% through 2018, lifted 800 million people out of poverty. For example, have a look back at 20 years ago. No one had Chinese electronics or cars. Now they're everywhere, showing a quick growth. During this massive growth, 70% of the population invested their money somehow into real estate, equivalent to 30% of China's GDP. In 2020, the global landscape changed almost overnight due to pandemic lockdowns, panic, fear, uncertainty, and unstoppable death due to the pandemic. The global flow of money had virtually ceased as people weren't working. Governments alike decided to provide stimulus and relief by turning on their money printers. In return, the grave consequences of printing trillions of dollars were unavoidable, like inflation. Inflation is a measure of rising prices of goods and services. In an economy, inflation is lack of purchasing power of the average person. For example, when you want to buy a new can of balls and you go to your local tennis shop, which usually costs you $5, now the same can costs you $8, and you're not going to afford those balls. It means they're expensive. The question is, how is inflation connected to China leading the way into a global financial meltdown? Due to globalization, nations are invested in one another, so if one falls, it must affect the others. For better understanding, Megan Green wrote a great piece in the Financial Times called Ignoring China's Disastrous 3Ds Could Be a Global Risk. She refers to the 3Ds as disease, drought, and debt. So the first one, disease. China has enforced the strictest of zero COVID policies from the beginning of the pandemic. Total shutdown of cities, which automatically halt production. So the supply chain has been totally disrupted. What is supply chain? Supply chain is the process of getting a ready product from the manufacturing plant to the end consumer who uses it. For example, if the ball plant stops production, well that means there's less supply, which results in fewer balls crossing the ocean. Now, the one who gets the ball is willing to pay the highest price because they're fewer in number. Now on to the second one, drought. Drought means some sort of extreme climatic conditions, whether it's increased heat, floods, etc. Almost 90% of China's electricity supply requires extensive water resources, and blackouts are causing temporary factory closures. Droughts has brought the Yangtze River to its lowest level since records began in 1865. Last year, six of the areas were struck by drought, further disrupting domestic and global supply chains due to which China reported half of its normal rice production. The impact on food supply will be significant. Increasing food costs affects every human, except rich people who remain unaffected by these changes. 
And number three, debt crises. The third D is considered to be the real wrecking ball. China's debt crisis is specifically centered around the real estate sector. 70% of China's population's wealth is tied up in real estate. This makes up nearly 30% of China's GDP. Imagine if 30% of the wealth of the second largest economy in the world is tied up in a single sector, and that sector is on the verge of a collapse. Banks lend property developers money in stages to build. But with the zero COVID policy and factory shutdowns, the workers who bought these homes are no longer able to meet their mortgage repayments. Unlike the rest of the world, where if you buy a property, you generally only start paying the mortgage once a property has been completed, in China, you start paying the mortgage right away, even before the property is completed. People can end up paying mortgages for years before they even have a place to stay in, rent out, or sell. In the real estate market, these investors are investing their life savings and taking out loans and investing their family's wealth into a sector that's traditionally a relatively safe sector. Chinese people are not at all aware of the risk and didn't see the housing bubble coming. As the Chinese economy was booming prior to the pandemic, these properties were heavily overvalued. As a result, China has thousands of buildings that remain unfinished, and tons of people left homeless, even after paying years of mortgages. China's most recognizable and largest property developer is Evergrande, who has failed to meet the payment deadline on its $300 billion debt. The frightening detail about Evergrande is that this $300 billion in debt is not Chinese debt exclusively. Due to a globalized world, many international entities are heavily invested in Evergrande. 30 other Chinese property developers have defaulted on international debt. It threatens devastating consequences. Businesses around the world are starting to have liquidity problems, which will lead to further unemployment. This means less money will be circulating in economies, which ultimately leads to a deflationary environment and even the possibility of an economic depression. As a result, the wealthiest Chinese residents are moving out of the country to relocate somewhere else. There's a strong reason for that. Why would one be willing to leave China, the place that they've called home for decades and decades? Well, maybe it's because they want to escape the destruction that may occur any time following the economic collapse. Censorship is at an all-time high in China, unlike the residents of the other countries where they enjoy more freedom on a personal level. China even controls content that's posted on the internet. The CCP does not believe that this is against the freedom of speech of the Chinese people. Though the government censorship exactly does this. Since the government has control over what will be posted on the internet, it's really challenging for an average person living in another country to find out what's actually happening related to the economic crisis within the country, and with the Chinese people who are sick and tired of the CCP. China makes use of propaganda to spread the government's views rather than the views of normal Chinese residents. It allows the government to have stronger social control over Chinese people. However, some have gone past these so-called tactics and have joined the revolt against the CCP. More and more protests are being held in China, more than ever. Even though the world is trying to fix the global consequences of Chinese collapse, and the Fed is trying to come up with strategies to create a softer landing, Many experts believe this crisis is bigger than just the Fed. No one knows the duration of these crises to be resolved, and many of the macro investors and advisors all have their own opinions based on the metrics they apply.